What's up guys, Arden here with Yellow House Aerial, and today we're gonna to be talking about lenses for the X7 versus lenses for the X5S. So it's been a little while since our last video. In that time, we've actually picked up the Zenmuse X7, the Super 35 camera for the Inspire 2. This thing is amazing. Um, we were a little bit late to the party getting it. This is not a brand new camera, but um, using it so far on jobs and with clients so far, we love it, they love it. It's just been fantastic. This thing is expensive, um, but it doesn't come without its benefits. We're gonna talk about the lenses for this versus how they compare to that for the X5S, um, but first, some mail. So we ordered a couple, just three things from DJI. Um, take a look at the size of this box. This is this is big. Uh, I will show you what's inside. Ready? Ready? Here we go. One. Some props for the Inspire Two. Two. That's it. That's everything. So. Evidently, DJI doesn't really have their box sizing down. Uh, these props are like, they're pretty big. Um, just some regular props for the Inspire 2. Good to have some spares just in case. And then this is, these are uh, Inspire 2 gimbal protection set. So these go on the bottom of the Inspire 2 and they hold on to um, the mount for the camera. So if anything happens, if the drone snags something or if it hits a big gust of wind or whatever, that mount isn't gonna fall off. 15 bucks a piece to save your $4,000 camera. Totally worth it. DJI, get on appropriate boxes. Seriously, you could have done with one that was like this big. You almost could have mailed this. Okay, let's get to it. Uh, X5S lenses versus X7. So let's start with the X5S. We've shot with the X5S for years. Right here, we have two of these. Um, basic X5S has the included 15 millimeter lens that comes with it, which is really just a, a rebranded Panasonic. And uh, then we had a number of other lenses that we use uh, just to get different angles. So from the widest, we'll talk about this one first. This is the Lawa Sea Dreamer 7.5 millimeter. This lens is amazing. It's nice and sharp, super wide at 7.5 mil, um, but it is full manual focus and manual aperture, aperture, so you can't change anything once it's up. So we have 7.5 mil, uh, we have the 15 from DJI, and then from Olympus, these are the M Mzuiko, M I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, Mzuiko series. We have the 25 millimeter and 45 millimeter. So on the X5S, we have 7.5, 15, 25, and 45. It's a nice range from wide to tight, gives you a whole bunch of different looks. If you're looking at lens options for the X5S, keep in mind that some lenses like this Olympus 45 millimeter have different filter thread sizes and you might need a step up or down ring to make your filters fit. Moving to the X7, if you get all four X7 lenses, they come in this fancy case right here. Uh, labels not included, had to make those yourself. And they are quite nice. Um, they're, they're very uniform. They're all the same, which is a bit of a, a contrast to the X5S lenses. So the X5S lenses are all made, um, they can be made by different companies because you can use any Micro Four Thirds lens on the X5S, whereas these are all made by DJI. So they have almost the same features. They have the same mount, same color scheme, same filter size, and they're going to have similar quality and optics. Whereas with the X5S lenses, if you get something that's a little, a little bit cheaper, maybe like a 12 to 24 or 12 to 42, I'm not sure what that zoom lens is. They're cheaper Micro Four Thirds options, and then they're more expensive ones. So you will have some variation in glass. Whereas for the X7, the only thing that's available right now is these, and they're a thousand to 1500 bucks a piece, depending what currency you're talking. And I would say they're worth it, but they are expensive. In Canada, it's like six grand just to get this set of lenses. You don't even have a camera for that, and you don't have a drone to fly it on. They are pricey, um, but they're pretty nice. Let's talk about balancing for a second. So both of these cameras have to be balanced depending on the filters that you have on them. The X5S is usually pretty easy to balance. Um, it's pretty balanced right out of the box. It has a weight ring that's on the lens. It's a little 10 gram uh, filterless filter, basically it's just a piece of metal and it keeps it nice and uh, steady, balanced, good to go. Most of the lenses are pretty well balanced. Um, you can replace that weight ring with an ND filter, which you probably will if you're shooting video and everything will be just fine with the exception of the 25 millimeter. The 25 mil is actually a little bit front heavy, especially if you put a filter on it, which means you'll need to add a little bit of weight to the back. This is where we have the good old buck 50 and some hot glue that we put onto the back of an X5S. Uh, this is just a spare back that we have. You hot glue it on there somewhere to the side so that it's balanced because the camera doesn't technically rotate around its center. Um, put it on and the 25 mil will balance. So this is delineated for the 25 only. It just needs a little bit of weight on the back to keep it balanced. So overall with the X5S, it's pretty straightforward to balance. You might need a little bit of weight for the 25 mil, but most of those lenses can be balanced close enough for flight just with a filter or that weight, depending what you're doing. The X7 
has all four of its lenses um, and they are for sure back heavy if they don't have a weight ring on it. It actually came with four weight rings and I don't need four weight rings. That's just too much screwing on and off to deal with. So I took three out of four and just left them at the office and one out of the four comes with us. If I need it, I'll put it on. But usually what you do is you'll pop off this hood here. Um, you'll put the filter on and it'll be pretty close. It'll be just fine. Downside is they didn't actually leave enough room inside this hood to put a filter and a weight ring. So if you put it on and it's still back heavy, there isn't really anything you can do. You can take this hood off, which takes a little bit of weight off, and then add the weight ring. Um, but you you can't use both and the hood at the same time, which kind of sucks. There's only a limited amount of clearance inside there. So the X7 has all this fancy glass that's made by DJI. It's all uniform. It's all very nice. But the cool thing about the X5S is because it's a standardized mount and it's not proprietary, you can actually hack lenses onto this. So the Laowa 7.5 millimeter, this super wide, is not supported by DJI and not listed on their website, but you can put it on here because it's a micro four, uh, micro four thirds mount. And when you do, you're, you get other options. I've seen people put like crazy 24 to 105 or to almost like 200 millimeter zooms or something ridiculous on it. It's way too long and you had to put a lead weight on the back. Um, and when you do hack it, you'll get this situation sometimes if you're shooting stills where the EXIF data will, all be, will be all messed up because it says no lens detected and you'll need a DNG cleaner, just a little bit messy. But it can be done and you could put like a 105 millimeter or a 200 millimeter lens on this camera um, it's possible and shooting video is easier because you don't have that EXIF data issue um, but it's hackable and the X7 totally isn't because that mount is 100% proprietary. So comparing focal lengths between the X5S and the X7, keep in mind that a focal length on the X5S won't look the same as that same focal length on the X7 because the sensor size is different so we'll get to that equivalency in just a second. Focal lengths for the X5S actually get a little bit wider and a little bit tighter on both ends. So you have a little bit more latitude with the X5S. Take a look. Here are the X5S lenses, 7.5 millimeter, 15 mil, 25 mil, and 45 mil. And here's the same scene shot with the X7 at 16 mil, 24 mil, 35 mil, and 50 mil. Let's go back to the wide. Here's the X5S's widest and the X7 widest. Here's the tightest lens on the X5S and here's the tightest lens on the X7. So looking at it from the perspective of the X7, in order to get that same super wide field of view, you would actually need a 10 millimeter DL mount lens, but that doesn't exist. So you're stuck at 16 if you're looking for the widest it can go. While I was doing these tests, I also framed up the same shot, but with a subject in the top right corner of the frame. Here are all four of our X5S lenses at 200% looking at that top right corner. You can see the Laowa 7.5 millimeter obviously has some vignetting, which is why this frame is darker and it also has some distortion visible here. But overall, as I've said before, this Laowa 7.5mm is a really sharp lens and doesn't have much chromatic aberration or anything. This is a worst case scenario we're looking at. Over to the DJI 15mm, that serious vignetting of the Laowa is obviously gone. It's got a little bit more of a purple cast, and overall really not a bad image. Not a lot of distortion, no real problems. Now over to the Olympus 25mm. Keep in mind I've focused on this shed here and not the chimney in the background. A little bit of flaring in the corner, and we've got some interesting blue flaring over here. But for the corner of a frame at 200%, this is looking really nice. Now over to the Olympus 45mm, which seems to have some back focus on this roof here. And obviously due to that defocus, there's a little bit of chromatic aberration on these leaves. But these images all look really great considering they're from the corner of a frame at 200%. Over to the X7. Starting on the 16mm, we obviously have some distortion on the chimney in the back, but that's okay considering it's a wide lens, and it's not really as bad as the Laowa 7.5mm. There's no chromatic aberration or really anything else to talk about in this frame. It's really nice and sharp. Over the 24mm, it's looking really nice. It's sharp. There's no chromatic aberration, no problems. Moving up to the 35mm, resolving a little bit more detail. Still no chromatic aberration, which is really indicative of the quality of these DJI lenses. Up to the 50mm is a little bit softer, and we have a tiny, tiny bit of chromatic aberration up on the left-hand side here, but these lenses look fantastic. Overall, what I've noticed is there are fewer problems and an overall more consistent appearance with the DJI X7 lenses. Some of the lenses for the X5S come in silver or black. This one we got in silver, and you can actually look at your drone, and you can see, if I see silver, I know that it's our only silver lens, so I know that I have the Laowa on there. But when I look at the X7, you, you don't even know, because if you look at this lens, you can't tell what focal length it is. Um, there's no clear visual. So X5S to X7, um, you'll lose a little bit of customization, but you'll gain that back in quality and glass and whatnot. Just something to think about. So the X5S does give you more lens options, including other ones that I didn't talk about in this video. I love the X7 lenses, but they do definitely come at a premium. So if you're tight for cash, the X5S has lots of options, um, but these things are truly beautiful and I am impressed with them. So my name is Arden for Yellow House Aerial. I'd like to thank you for watching. Drop us a like if you enjoyed this, subscribe to see what else we're into, and I will see you in the next video.